So hello everyone and uh, welcome to the Halifax Partnerships webinar on product photography for e-commerce. I'm Jason Guidry uh, and I'm part of the Halifax Partnership Smart Business Team. Uh, the Halifax Partnership is Halifax's economic development organization. We support businesses of every shape and size in all corners of HRM. Over the past year, many businesses have diversified their client base by launching a transactional e-commerce website. The partnership has helped uh, with programs uh, like the eBay Retail Revival Program, the Access Local Program, which we, which we developed in partnership with VLife, and the Shop Here Program, uh, where we partnered with Digital Main Street and Google. Through this work, we identified the two issues businesses were struggling with the most when preparing to launch an online store, product photography and writing descriptive text properly present the products or services. With this in mind, we've partnered with an e-commerce consultant, Taina Fetoza, of not just a pretty interface, uh, to develop two seminars to help businesses with both of these important aspects of e-commerce. Our session is about 45 minutes long today, uh, so we'll have lots of time for your questions at the end. Please use the chat function to send your questions through to the uh, uh, or throughout the presentation uh, so that we can address them before we finish up today. Now I'd like to introduce you to Tina, who will walk you through the principles of photography for e-commerce. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, first I'd like to thank Jason Gidry and his team for inviting me to this webinar. I, I just love e-commerce. I love talking about e-commerce and uh, product photography is one of my passions in this, uh, in this very uh, busy, busy area. Um, so, well, my name is Taina Feitosa and I'm an e-commerce specialist and consultant originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And now I'm based in, uh, in St. Peter's here in Cape Breton. I've been working with e-commerce since 2007 and I've specialized in online visual merchandising for small businesses. I believe that e-commerce has the power to connect people to different cultures, ideas, experiences, and memories. And now that our mobility is gone due to the pandemic, e-commerce has been a very powerful channel to continue connecting people and culture, so merchants and clients, and keep on that transaction, that money flowing. So before we start talking, uh, really diving into product photography, let's uh, go back a little bit and uh, you know, try to uh, brainstorm a bit, what is a product in a real store and what is a product in an online store? So in a real store, the, um, the product is physical and it's immediately available for the customer to explore through the senses. So you can touch the product, you can smell, you can taste it, you can try it on and you can read the label, you can read the packaging. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always ask an associate or you can ask your friends. And, um, and, but in an online store, the product isn't really there, right? What we have is a representation of the product. What you're seeing is, is visuals, our uh, visuals, our texts, are all these elements that are helping you to imagine the product in your, in your hand or in your, you know, in your home or how you're going to use this. Uh, so this is why it, uh, a complete product page is important to, um, to convert the customer and to bring success to your online store. But actually, the only thing in common a regular store has with an online store is that the competitor is just a click or a tap away. So think about, you know, last time you went to Best Buy or you went to a, a big department store and you're searching for something specific, but you're, you want to see more about the product or you want to see if somewhere, in, somewhere else has a better price, for example. That's what we do all the time. And we do it in e-commerce as well. So uh, it's very important to be mindful of that. So um, how do we actually represent the product in an online store? A product is represented by its title, which is really funny. I was thinking about it last night. When we go to a store, we don't name the products. We don't say that, you know, we don't give a, a particular name to anything that is, you know, on display, that is on, on the hanger. But we do that in e-commerce, which is a really interesting thing. And we can be very creative in that. So uh, a title is the, you know, the first uh, element of the product representation. This queue is uh, and also another element. We have the variants, so the sizes, uh, the colors, the materials, or any other thing that varies the product between its line. 
Uh, you have the size chart, the composition, the care instructions, a technical description and a romantic description that we're going to talk about next week. Um, you have the price, of course, and also photography and video to support uh, your product. And why should we invest in a great product photography? Basically because we're attracted by images. The first thing we see in uh, on, online, we see in an e-commerce store is the product image, is the real thing, is not the text, is not the title, is not the description. We see the picture and if we like it, if we are attracted to it, we'll click and go see more about this product in its page. Uh, and the image also provides uh, transparency and trust to the user. So if you see the, the picture of a product, you're believing that that product is exactly how it is, right? And that you think that that's exactly what you're gonna get in the mail. Um, but it also helps you as the merchant to save time by not having to explain the same things to different clients many times. So keep in mind that if you're doing that, uh, you know that there are other clients that are not reaching out to you to ask the, those questions. They're just, you know, they're just leaving. They're not gonna bother. Uh, and also keep in mind, like if you're, if you're asking, if, if people are asking what the material is, if that, you know, that product is soft, if it's, you know, if it's hard, if it does this or does that, maybe that's something you should add to your product description or to your image, because you're going to have to explain this over and over and it's not very, very efficient. And it also helps reduce um, exchange and returns uh, on your online store. So the, what we call it a chargeback. So by making the product very clear online, the customer knows exactly what they're buying and the chances that they will keep the product in the end are higher. Uh, but this can also have a reverse effect. So if you have a product that isn't that premium, isn't that great, but you pump up that image and the description and everything looks so amazing. And when the product arrives, it's not that great. It can also uh, be, uh, be returned by the customer. So um, let's first talk about uh, different types of photography. And, uh, and for this part of the webinar, I'm gonna actually talk about the types of photography and give you some tips and ideas on how to replicate this at home using uh, nothing, using well, minimal resources or in you know, a very, very low budget, basically what you have at home or what you can get uh, you know, at a dollar store, for example. Um, so uh, first of all, we have the still, what we call still or clean cut photography. So the first one here on the left, this, um, this uh, marina beige cardigan. Uh, so the still or clean cut photography is a picture that shows the product, usually with a solid background, it could be white or gray or any other color. And it shows the product's features without any external interference. So the goal of this product type, um, this image type of uh, product is to provide no distractions at all. So the focus is 100% on the product and its qualities. And then we have the human touch photography, which is also known as lifestyle photography. And this uh, type of picture shows the product in action and being used to, in its intended environment. So the goal with this type of picture is to inspire and approximate the product to the user. So, so this example here um, is a, a picture of um, a dress, a girl's dress, and the background isn't white, but that's okay. You can still see clearly uh, what this dress is, the colors, the shape, the, so a little bit of the fabric as well, the texture. Uh, and you can see here on the left side, uh, we have more pictures of this product. So they're not just limiting themselves to you know, one or two pictures of front and back. They are also giving some details, um, you know, the lace details here in the back, a little bit of the fabric. Um, so you can see more of, more of it. So the more pictures in your product page, the merrier. So, um, so yeah, for this webinar, Jason actually challenged me to uh, create, a, a, well, do the process and, uh, and well, document the process of creating for, for, um, still pictures or uh, you know, any type of, of product photography images here at home using the minimal resources. So I accepted the challenge and, uh, and I was lucky because the sun was beautiful here in Cape Breton for the, this past week. And uh, so it was, it, was, it was a good exercise. It was really fun. So, uh, so I moved to Canada not long ago and uh, all I brought was my old Canon camera, which is actually kind of broken right now. So I'm gonna need an upgrade very soon. But I saw I'm using minimal resources. I also use my phone uh, besides my camera and um, sunlight, a styrofoam board um, and any other uh, 
material that I had. I had some plastic bags, bubble wrap in the basement. So I used all of this on my uh, as props for these uh, for this webinar. So the first thing I tried was to do a still cut photo on a budget. So what I used was the sunlight, which is coming from the left side here. So I used the styrofoam board on my right side to reflect a bit of that light and reduce the shadow that would happen here on the right side of the, of the picture of the product. Uh, so, and, and I, I always talk about this styrofoam because uh, I didn't learn this until uh, not so long ago. So I spent many hours of my life and many years of manually editing this on Photoshop and trying to remove the shadow and compensating. So it was a lesson learned and um, I you know, suggest everybody to go buy a styrofoam board or save next time they buy something online. Um, so I did my I used my phone to take these pictures and I did a little bit of uh, photoshopping to um, to frame the picture and uh, adjust the brightness and the contrast. So so yeah so this is the first picture of the whole process I took with my phone and uh, the second is after the the editing. It still has some you know work to be done here on the edges, but you can see it's a perfect still cut clear image of a product. That, uh, that you can be using online and taking you know, at home with minimal resources. This other example here is a, a smaller product and sturdier than the vest that I showed in the other picture. Uh, so this is a good, um, a good example to um, a good product that you can start using with a light box, which I'm gonna show now. So uh, this light box, I actually bought this one from Henry's. And so it's you know, for $120, you can't go wrong with it, especially if you're selling small products, home decor, very tiny products. Um, I did some examples with a, a pair of shoes and I thought it was a little too big actually for this light box. Um, if it was the style, I don't know. But uh, so it's a, it's a really great piece of equipment with, um, you know, for only $120. And I thought that um, I tested taking pictures of my camera and my phone, and the phone was the best one. So I would totally recommend investing in this. If you are, if you have a store and you're selling small products, tiny products, this is the way to go. Um, but before you, if you, you know, before investing in that, if you want to try something else, or if you're really on a smaller, low budget at all, uh, I recommend just getting a blank piece of paper or in the styrofoam board, of course, and placing it on the wall by a, you know, next to a window or in front of a window where you can get natural sunlight. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, well, I didn't do here very well, but uh, you would want some tape here on the wall to adjust it and maybe put some more uh, white uh, white boards on the side to, um, to minimize the amount of work in post-production that you're gonna have. You can also use other fabrics um, or colorful fabrics and other or blankets that you have at home to have the same effect if you want, not white, for example. Um, this is an example of uh, using a hanger to showcase your product, but this is really tricky. It could go either way. It could, give, it could be really, really good or it could be really lame. So you gotta be very careful uh, on using hanger. Um, so this example, Cafe Forgot, is, uh, is a designer boutique in New York. So they're using a hanger here, I'm guessing at their store, at their floor shop, and um, you know, just in front of this tray. And, uh, and all the products that they carry are always shot in the same way. So when, I'm going to show later the website, and it's, when you see it, it, it has a composition, it has a story, it has everything is very standardized. Uh, and I like how they, how they use the, a very clear hanger so it, the focus is completely on the product. So I tried doing the same thing here at home and uh, my dining room has this, the pink walls um, and, this, and, and then a very nice direct sunlight in the morning. So it was perfect to take this picture. So I, I selected this more sturdier dress to, to, for the shot and I just put the hanger that I had in my, in my closet. And uh, I used my phone with the, for this picture. And we also with minimal Photoshop editing, mostly the content aware fill tool that I'm gonna talk about later, I was able to create this, um, this nice, very objective, straightforward image of this product that I could use on my e-commerce. But if you don't want a hanger, if you actually need a mannequin or you know, because your product has, you want to highlight the curves or highlight the shape of the product, you can always use um, a fiberglass mannequin or a fabric mannequin. But mannequins can be really tricky as well. Uh, you don't want to look uh, you know, too cheap or you don't want to look you know, lazy or anything like that. So uh, be mindful of the type of mannequin that you are 
uh, that you're using for your store. And in this case here, this overall, uh, so one leg is in the mannequin, the other is kind of floating on the side, but so they used, um, they probably used um, some, something to fill it in. It could be either you know, newspaper or, or bubble wrap or just plastic bags or, you know, soapy bags now that we, we have access to. Uh, anything that won't leave this leg hanging, right, and flaccid in the picture that won't look good. And this is another example of um, a mood board type of product photography for apparel. And this concept was actually originated with Polyvore in 2007. I don't know if you guys remember this, um, but it was really before Pinterest, before anything else. So, uh, and it became a very staple way of how we communicate online today. So from looking from above, you have a clear view of the mood and experience that this product is selling you. And I love how they're pairing the boots with the jacket. It just uh, gives a really you know, mood boardy feel to it and it will really give you the, what they're, what they're the, the sense, the feeling that they're selling you. So this is more you know, a country laid back um, you know, style type of product. So if I buy this, this jacket, I'm gonna feel like I'm in the country. I'm gonna feel that kind of experience and energy. Uh, but if I had, you know, a pair of stilettos or some flashy jewelry, it would give me a totally different feeling to it. And I must note that this picture was taken from a Lost and Found's Instagram account. Uh, it's a, it's a, they're um, a store in Halifax. And uh, I'm not sure if they have an e-commerce, actually. I didn't check. I also follow, always follow them on Instagram. And they do transactions through Instagram. So that's why I considered these, um, this as an example for this webinar. Uh, because you don't, you know, you can, e-commerce is just about selling it online and doing non-physical tr money transactions, you know, for products or services. You can use, you know, uh, Shopify is just one platform, but Instagram can be another, uh, you know, uh, platform for your, uh, for your e-commerce. Uh, another really great thing to consider uh, are mock-ups, especially if you're selling t-shirts or sweatshirts or other products that are very basic and um, you're not gonna, you're not creating a new one every time. So for example, the basic t-shirt like this from Uniqlo, um, they, you can always create, uh, you can take a picture of your own t-shirt, your own product, or you can buy a mock-up online. It's not, you know, it's not expensive. It's not uh, it's impossible. And if you search a little bit more, you can probably find them for free. Um, but you can, but if you're creating a new one, like I did in my business a few years ago in Brazil, uh, we did t-shirts, but our t-shirt didn't have uh, the sewing here on the, on the shoulder. And also we had to actually, it was, it, this was really hard to <laughs> take a picture of because the t-shirt was big. And uh, so I was had it on the floor and I had a letter and I was using my here on my old camera and taking a picture, a 90 degree picture. It was very, you know, it's very energetic. It was, my body was very, uh, in, in, you know, tense after it, but it was perfect for us because we created this t-shirt. So what we did afterwards was applying the artworks that we were selling and printing on demand on the, this product uh, using Photoshop. So we had over 6,000 SKUs at my shop and uh, we just couldn't possibly um, you know, order samples and take pictures of everything. It's just, we didn't have the money or the time or the energy or the space to put all these um, 6,000 <laughs> t-shirts in. So uh, using mock-up was what, uh, what have worked for us very well. Uh, so I personally use freepick.com as my image bank. They are around, I think, 13 uh, Canadian dollars or US dollars. Uh, it's not a big expense and uh, you can cancel any time and they have great, great uh, uh, mock-ups and uh, many resources for anything that you need actually. Uh, so you just go through mock-ups and you're going to find some really great ideas. You have t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, even folded t-shirts. So anything that you need to, uh, to start selling online if you're using um, a product like this. But be mindful too that if you put uh, an image, for example, this big on this t-shirt, and but you can't produce like this, you can't actually have an image this big, this size, um, then you're lying to your customer. So uh, be mindful that what they're seeing online is what they're expecting to get in the mail. So if the print has to be smaller, just put a smaller print on the mock-up as well. So now let's uh, shift gears a little bit. Um, I want to do a little bit of brainstorming here about this product, this V-neck tank, uh, to try to um, explain more about uh, models in product photography for e-commerce. 
So from this uh, picture alone and reading the short description that the website provides, is it clear to you that this will ever fit you, will ever fit your body? And uh, I'm, a, I'm a customer for this, for this brand, for this shop. And, uh, and uh, I actually, I was a little you know, shocked when I saw this product, like I couldn't really understand if that was gonna fit my body because it just looks so slim. It just looks so tiny, so skinny uh, without seeing a person wearing it. So that was my first, uh, my first impression of this product. So uh, as a target audience for this brand and this type of product, I am concerned, for example, if, uh, if this tank will hide, my, will hide my bra straps, will hide my bra on the back, because it says it's a V-neck. But I can't understand just by looking at this picture how deep this V-neck is, for example, or even how long this, uh, this tank top is. Like, will it cover my belt? Will it be a crop top? How, how does it work? What are the, the dimensions of it? So it, there are too many questions that go unanswered if you don't have, uh, if you don't have, you don't, if you don't see someone using the product uh, on the page. But luckily, they do have uh, models uh, using their products. So here you can see clearly that, uh, you know, how this V-neck is, how the shape of this product is, and it just looks completely different from the still cut photography that they are showing as well. Um, and I like that they are also putting the this this caption here. Uh, it's you know to help you visualize more. So they're saying that this model is a five foot tall and uh, she's a regular extra large wearing an extra large tank top. So this will give me more base into, okay, so if she's an extra large, I think um, a large or a medium would work well for me. So I have more uh, a clear perception of how this product will, will fit me or not, or maybe I'll just move on and pick another one. Um, so this is uh, um, so this is important to, for example, if you're selling leggings, uh, what is what comes to your mind when you want to buy leggings? You're concerned that it's gonna if you're going you know if you're buying it to go to the gym, for example, you're gonna do you know squatting a lot, you're gonna you know be moving a lot. So you want to make sure that those leggings there aren't sheared, they're not gonna be transparent, they're not gonna embarrass you. So how you're gonna show this online? If you're selling leggings, you're going to show if that's a concern for your customer, then how you're going to show that these leggings are not sheer. They're not going to be, you know, embarrassing. They can be used for the gym. They can be used for anything. So, um, yeah, like, you know, qu questions like that, that can, uh, that can uh, be in your customer's mind and they can return a product if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't suit their needs or if it frustrates them in that sense. So um, here's another example of model photography uh, from Etsy. Um, it's a shop called Drama Boy Vintage. Uh, and I'm guessing here that the, the store owner is the own model for, uh, for her store. But, and so she chose to cut off her head from the image. And it's a good alternative if you're looking to save money on hair and makeup, if you have to use a model for, for, you know, for your product photography. And it also makes it makes the shooting more agile because the model doesn't have to engage so much with the camera, with the photography. She doesn't have to, you know, put all the, the expression and the attitude. It's just you dress, you style it, make sure everything is okay, everything is neat, take the picture, different angles, and move on to the next look. So uh, now that we're talking about models, and you know, let's uh, shift a little bit to human touch photography or lifestyle photography, as we call it. Uh, so as I said, it's the product in action being used in its intended environment. And the goal here is to inspire and approximate the product to the user. And this is an example of a, of a human touch photography. So it's not your usual um, you know, e-commerce uh, pro product photo, you know, just the model showing the, the, the product, showing the t-shirts. And here you have this you know, biker gang or this uh, this group of people and using the same t-shirt that they're selling. This is, you know, East Coast unisex t-shirt. That's exactly what they're selling. And they're showing this attitude, this, this humorous uh, around the product. Um, this one is, this is a type of um, um, stage photography called stage lifestyle picture, also called with ambiance. So this merchant here, Fungus Gallery, is selling these cute eye sculptures. Uh, and so they decorated this little corner, uh, with the shelf and the books and uh, with all the props to showcase how the customer, to help the customer visualize how this product will look in their, in, in their home and their decor. And, uh, and this is very clever too, because this is, this is a tiny product with, you know, it doesn't cost that much. Uh, so they are even, you know, but pushing you or inspiring you to buy more than one. 
So if you want to look like this, you can all just buy four at the same time and you know have the same look. Um, for this type of product photography, you can uh, you don't need to use a model for this, and you can reuse your props many many times. So you can buy even you know crazy nice cool you know props on consignment shops and um, um, antique stores or eBay or just find things around the house and put everything together. It's something that fits your brand. Uh, it's a cool lot, a low cost setup, and the execution will give you enough material to work with in your e-commerce and also on social media. This is another example of a staged um, photography. Um, They're selling here an Egyptian loofah, 100% uh, natural and eco-friendly. So, and a loofah, we know, everybody knows what a loofah is, right? There's no, not much, you know, much more to it. So the way they set up here with the towels, the lavender, the candles, it's, it just gives you this whole spa, natural zen look to it, look and feel to it and it enhances the, eco-friendliness and the sustainability around the product and around the brand. So I feel like if I buy this loofah, I'm gonna, you know, my bathroom will be a spa <laughs> in my in, in my house. So it's a, you know, it really attracts and inspires the customer this way. Um, this is another example of, um, uh, of, of creative lifestyle pictures that can be used for both e-commerce and social media. You can see that it goes from using your friends and family as models, like in the first picture here, it's the same website from the first example I gave, Girl From Away, uh, from using uh, you yourself or you know, your partner or your, you know, your business partner as a model uh, to showcase the product. And, uh, or even have a professional model, a professional photographer with a you know, renowned name and, uh, and the whole creative concept behind it to create a set of pictures that um, will reflect your brand and really sell the product. So in this case here, uh, uh, I think this one was shot by Petra Collins, uh, who's a pretty big, uh, well, she started, I think, on Instagram. She started online, but now she's a very big uh, fashion photographer. And they're selling this little earring here, which is really, really beautiful. Um, so now uh, the hand model is really is it's really important, especially if you're selling small products. Not just uh, I'm not talking about just jewelry or you know accessories, but also in this case it's an ashtray. Uh, that if you just look at the picture of the ashtray, you can't really understand or have a clear dimension of how big this ashtray is. Even though you have uh, the size here, uh, I think it's four inches by three inches by two inches. I mean. You know what what does that even mean even if you have a measuring tape you're gonna see it now but you're not gonna but you know, you're just imagining how big this is so if you have a picture that uh, with a hand or something that will show how clear this um, how, how big this product is compared to something that is familiar like a hand um, the customer will feel more um, well, less frustrated at the end when the product arrives and it's not what they thought it was and um, and it just, it gives more um, a human approach to, uh, to the product. Another type of photography is blurred model photography. Uh, this is really good too, uh, if you're trying to save money on, uh, on you know, hair and all the, this pre-production for the, for the shooting. And, uh, and it's good because it, if you don't want to have like the model, you know, posing type of photography, uh, this can be a really good alternative as well. So the models are gonna be blurred, the background is gonna be blurred and the focus, uh, like literally the focus on the picture is gonna be on the product. So here they're selling this, um, uh, this, this charcuterie platter, like a big cheese board made of uh, recycled chopsticks. Um, it's really, really cool. And uh, so it gives you the whole, you know, summer, spring, uh, you know, friends and family happy vibe to, to this product. Okay, so now that we talked about all the different types of product photography, let's Sorry, Tina, I believe you're freezing up. Um, maybe before, I, I can- And else before you start clicking uh, your, your camera, let's uh, go back a little bit and uh, and, have a clear understanding. 
marketing plans and all the, those elements of the product photography, especially. Uh, think And also think about who your customer is and what is their motivation to buy. Are they teens? Are they seniors? Are they a corporate buyer? Are they first-time shoppers? Are they avid online shoppers? Are they entertainment shoppers? Are they purposeful shoppers? Uh, so for example, someone who will go to, to Henry's, uh, I've been going there a lot <laughs> online right now, uh, it's because they're looking for something specific, right? They're being, they're looking for something technical. They're making a mindful purchase um, uh, for a, a, a photo equipment, for example. Uh, but if you're going to Etsy, you can be just, you know, just playing around, just window shopping, just entertaining yourself and seeing what else is new, what is what is fun. But you can also be proposal shopping on Etsy as well if you're looking for a gift or if you're looking for something, you know, for a party or a wedding, something very specific. So they have a clear understanding of how the, the customer approaches you, how they're looking to buy and engage with your store. And you will have more understanding of how the product picture uh, will have to be. Also consider how is your e-commerce interface? Uh, how do you want it to look like? So are you thinking about, do you want the products floating in the air, floating on your page? Do you want them more of a mood board type of thing? Do you want them you know, colorful? Do you want to tell a story? So, have that in mind and before you take a picture, because if you think about this later, then you're going to think, oh my God, I actually needed, you know, still uh, pictures and a white background. And I didn't think of that before. So I have to go and redo my work, my shooting. So um, all of this is to um, make sure that you have everything ready when you're, when you're shooting and uh, minimize post-production. So here's another example from Tetra. Uh, from the same ashtray. So even though we saw the, the picture of the ashtray with the hand and all, uh, they also have uh, these you know, blank uh, backgrounds. So the products are floating in their catalog page. But once you go to the product page, you have all the other lifestyle pictures. So uh, this is, yeah, this is what they, they decided they wanted to do. Um, and again, Cafe Forgot, which is, you know, a, 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 I like this example a lot. It's really simple. Um, it's a very, very basic e-commerce experience and uh, missing a lot of information, but, I, but, it, but it still sells because the brand is so strong and uh, the way they're selling, the way they're um, promoting the, the designers and the brand, it's very on point with the brand and you, you know, it's acceptable. Um, so I like how they have all the drapes and you can see clearly that it feels like you're in the store almost, right? Like if you're, if you were physically in the store, you would see the drapes around you, you would see the drapes around the, the hanger. So um, it's a, it really gives you a feeling to be present somewhere. Uh, I created this, uh, this homepage banners guide. Uh, we're gonna, I think we're going to um, share the, all those links from the, from the presentation with you. So I'm not going to open this right now, but uh, I just made this really quickly with the debut team from Shopify. I'm a Shopify partner as well. And uh, so I, I created this dummy online store with uh, this dummy, uh, dummy homepage, uh, just so you guys can take a look and see, you know, and think about the dimensions of the banners and all the assets that you need for your e-commerce. So basically we have three sizes, three, three shapes. We have portrait, landscape, and square. So for example, if your home banner is, uh, is landscape and it's like tiny, thin, short like this, when you're shooting, you gotta be mindful of how you're gonna shoot, how you're gonna frame this product in your, uh, with your camera to make sure that you have enough material, visual material to work with a banner this shape, for example. And it also applies to, uh, to landscape and to the portrait and the square shapes as well. And, um, and again, I'm, you know, I gotta, be, uh, I gotta say this again, but it's really important to plan your shooting ahead of time. So even if you're gonna spend a couple of days planning this, uh, it will save you so much time in the future in post-production and when you're actually doing the shooting. Doesn't matter if you're doing the shooting at home using you know, your styrofoam and your sunlight or if you're hiring a photographer, a studio, or a professional model. Uh, especially then because you know, you're, it's, it's an ex expensive, um, um, uh, process and uh, and if you don't know exactly what you're doing, what's going to be done that day, you're going to waste. You're going to you know spend the money that it's not going to be very very effective. So I created this uh, uh, the shot list template on Airtable that you're going you guys going to get the link later, uh, and it basically. Um, well, you can organize all the products that you're gonna shoot, the, the color variants, uh, the, the how you're how it's gonna be shot. It's front back, 45 degree angle. It's a close up. 
um, where you're gonna pair it with, um, the background color, and also when you're actually doing the shooting, you don't have to you know, remember all of this. This is all written down, you just follow, and you follow this checklist. So let's talk a little bit about the equipments that you need to take all these other pictures that we talked about. So uh, ideally, in a, you know, in a higher budget world, you're going to have a tripod and interchangeable background. Uh, you're going to have a, a reflector. You're going to have a professional camera or an amazing phone at all. But if you don't have all these, all these resources, and you can, also, you, know, you can find the equivalents at home. So for example, the tripod, you can substitute for a furniture or a pile of books. So for example, just use my little, you know, my little table here and I put my camera and right in the, this, the angle that I needed for my light box. Uh, if you don't have an interchangeable background, you can always use a wall, a nice wall, right? And you can buy you know, a pint of paint and paint or create something uh, or use collages or posters or something in the background to look more like how you want it to look. Uh, but be mindful that you need natural light. So it doesn't matter if you have a pretty wall in your bedroom, but there's no sun coming through the window. There's, it's pointless. Uh, a remote shutter control is a very cheap piece of, uh, of uh, equipment that you can buy anywhere for any price. Uh, and of course, it's started from Worth, my best friends here, uh, you know, as uh, you can use in, uh, in replace of uh, a reflector. Uh, a softbox kit is, it's surprisingly inexpensive at Henry's. I was a little shocked. <laughs> Actually, I thought it was gonna be more expensive, but it's not that much. And uh, especially if you're working with apparel or bigger products that you can use with a light box. And if you have room and if it's something you're gonna really invest and do a lot of pictures and a lot of create a lot of content for, uh, consider investing in a softbox kit. But if you don't, if you don't have the money, our, you know, our son, the friend's son is always a, a good alternative. Uh, think about the location for the shooting. So um, again, you don't need to rent a studio. You don't need to go you know, overboard with this, but uh, just be mindful that if you're shooting with a person, you need to be at least you know, from nine to 10 feet away from them to have a, little, you know, have a distance and use the margins that I talked about before. Uh, so, think, and you want some, you know, room in, on the side so you can walk and uh, maneuver and also prop your, put all your products, all your, your, your elements, everything you're going to work with. Um, and then we have the photographer, the model, the crew, etc. So hiring a professional phot photographer, hiring a professional model can be costly, but there are other alternatives. You can always reach out to photography students or um, people that are, are building their portfolio and, you know, come up with a proposal or pay them with, with products or uh, even a good way to create a, a friendly or a good work environment for people that are working for you for free is to always, always have food, always have food on the table, always have coffee and, uh, oh, and have a good, a good environment, a good place where they can connect to with other people and they'll, they will be more than happy to, you know, come and work for you for free. I mean, not always work for, no, you know, if you can't afford to pay people, just, you know, pay them, of course. But if you can't and you want to collaborate in that sense, then, you know, always, always have coffee and donuts around. It's, it's, it's mindful. It's really good. Uh, and always, you know, you can use your friends and family as, uh, as models to, to support you. And oh, you can always use yourself as well. So and the possible, go, go creative. Possibilities are endless. So um, going back a little bit to the challenge that Jason uh, um, gave, well, challenged me with, uh, I did a little photo shooting on my backyard these past two days because it was such a beautiful and warm day and I wanted to test some, uh, you know, some outdoor photography. So for example, here I'm, um, I have my original image. So I took it with a camera. Uh, I have no editing at all here. And the second one is uh, the same picture, but framed, cropped in the square because that's how I decided that my eco e-commerce, my fictional e-commerce will look like. So I uh, just want to explain here about the process and really, you know, again, the margins, you need room. One thing that I see a lot uh, in e-commerce uh, and, and in the picture taking process is that people will focus on the product per se, just the product. They're not going to think about the background. They're not going to think about everything else around it. So it can be a little even claustrophobic, actually, when you see the product on the screen and it's, it's so close to the board, it's so close to the margin. Um, anyway, so here's my original image. So you can see there's a lot of margin, there's a lot of background that we can work with. And uh, I always open um, 
a square canvas, a blank canvas on the side. Uh, I always use a um, uh, thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. And, uh, and then I drag and drop the original image inside the square so I can understand and play around with, um, with, uh, with the, the arrows here and, uh, and really frame and crop and uh, focus on what I want about this, this image. So here, I just wanna highlight, so see how big this image is compared to my canvas. So this is good. It means that I have a lot of room to play around with and, uh, and you know, so I can actually have the shot that I'm looking for. So, so that was a good example. So this is a bad example. This I took on purpose. So this is my shoe uh, in the light box and I purposely focused on the product. So you see that I don't have as much margin as, uh, as the other image. So when I drag and drop into my square canvas, I, I, I framed it to have the product the size that I want for the image, but you see that there is uh, here, this, uh, the, the background from the other image is showing up. So I got to fill these gaps, right? And uh, it can be, it can be a little tricky. It, could, it was tricky before, uh, before the, um, Photoshop didn't have the content aware field tool. Uh, this is, I, I love, well, there are many, I'm gonna talk about uh, post-production softwares later in a minute, but uh, it's, uh, I highly recommend Photoshop because just because of this tool, it just saves you so much time. And before this was a thing that we had to like manually, you know, erase the background or use a magic wand, which is not such a great solution many times, but it was very time consuming. So just using this element, you can see it's really simple and it just fills up you know, the empty spaces that you need. And this is my final image. So from that gap that I had here, I used the content fill the wear tool to, uh, to, to fill the gaps. And, uh, but it's, you know, there's still a little work here to be done, but this is the, the idea. So if you wanna minimize that, if you wanna minimize all the post-production, have you know, margins, background, a lot of background that you can play around with. Here's another example of a bad, bad product photography. So this is another uh, dress or overall that I had in my, in my closet. And uh, it's, it's, I think it's silk or linen. So the fabric really wrinkles. It's, you know, uh, it's, it's a really complicated piece of, of clothing. Uh, so when I'm just hanging it on, it has the shoulder pads as well. So if I'm just hanging it uh, on the hanger, it's, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look very flattering. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's kind of ugly actually. Um, so I had these, um, the plastic bags and the bubble wraps in my basement. So I brought them up and, you know, stuffed it to see how I could shape it, how it would look like. And I mean, the result is this, it's not, it's not bad. <laughs> I think there's a, I would have, maybe I would have done, uh, maybe on the floor, actually, I would have, it would be a better solution for this, but it's not bad. And if you're, you know, if you really have to do this product and really put it online and, you know, in the hanger, because that's the only resource you have. So consider, you know, these, all these, you know, cheap things that you have at home to use as filling. And, uh, but this is not perfect yet, of course, uh, because I didn't, uh, I didn't iron it or I didn't steam it. So you can see on the neck here, that is all wrinkled and just folded and just not looking good. Uh, so this is not something you're gonna, you know, fix in post-production because you think that Photoshop is, is has, you know, makes miracles, but it doesn't. <laughs> uh, so this type of thing you don't want to fix in Photoshop because it will consume a lot of time, a lot of energy, and it's not gonna look good. So you know, just you know, go back a little bit before clicking. Make sure that all the products are safe or are, are perfect or close to perfect. Uh, and here's another example too. This is uh, just a candle holder that I shot from above using the light box. And I used my, my phone actually for this. And I didn't do any, any editing. So, um, so you know how good you know, phone cameras are today uh, when you're using with a light box. So I just you know, grabbed from my mantelpiece and put in the light box and shot it just to, to test it out. But then when I uploaded to the here to, to, to the slide, I realized that I didn't take out this little screw <laughs> that I, it was inside. So, uh, you know, I just didn't see, I didn't pay attention to it. So it can happen when you're shooting a lot of products, you have, you know, a lot going on. Be mindful, of course, this we can always erase in Photoshop, but you know, why bother if you can just you know, clean the product first, remove the, the, the screw, you don't have to fix it later. And where my mouse go here. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, again, 
the styrofoam <laughs> boards that I always like. Um, so this is another type of um, uh, background that we call a V-flap. So it makes this corner type of uh, thing that you can put the product in front. And this can have many different sizes. Like if you're actually investing in a V-flap, like a, for, for a human, for, you know, for human size, then it can be really, really big and expensive. But again, if you're using smaller products, just a couple of you know, styrofoam boards or whatever, or wooden boards that you can use and, uh, and, and prop it well, will do the trick. And uh, it, I don't know, I, 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 like this, uh, I like this corner. It gives a um, more uh, elegant and uh, classy uh, feeling to the, to the product image. Of course, this one has no editing at all, but I just like to you know, show you how the, you know, the lines here in the back, they just, you know, you know, it gives me a flattering image for the for the product. And again, here minimal resources. You know, I have my sunlight coming from uh, from the balcony, and uh, yeah, and just just my dining room. There's not uh, you know, just, it's not a studio. It's nothing fancy. And here a little bit about post production. So as I said, I always recommend Photoshop and Lightroom to work on post production because they're the most complete softwares uh, in the field. And, uh, and they have a 30 day trial that you can, uh, you can enjoy and um, you know, play around with a little bit and see how you deal with the interface if it's your first time. Uh, and then after that, it's just $13 a month, uh, Canadian dollars plus tax. So I think it would be around $15. And uh, I've, I've been using it for over 10 years. So it's something that I, you know, it's as, for me, it's as necessary as an email. But, uh, but if it's your first time and you're not editing images all the time or you don't have, or you want to try out, you want to learn before committing to, um, you know, committing your credit card to, to Adobe, you can always try GIMP, which is this first one with the little fox and the little dog, uh, or Pixlr. They're both free and they're based, they're, they're browser based. So you're not going to download the software. Uh, it has, it has more limited resources than Photoshop, um, but uh, you can, but it totally does the trick. It, sometimes you can't do like more detailed editing, but it, it works well. And if in their other, there are probably other resources online. You can always Google and see if you find a better one. But now that we have uh, so many online training, online courses and YouTube videos, I mean, before you actually needed a degree to understand Photoshop and to use it. But nowadays, if you have some time and you can teach yourself and uh, you can always use you know, YouTube and these guides to help you um, navigate through it. Yeah, and that was my, that was my whole webinar on product photography. And uh, I'm opening the floor for questions if anybody has any. Okay, so we do have one from Jacqueline Finn, and it's uh, any tips for close-up jewelry photography to avoid shadows and the show of texture of a piece, and show the texture of the piece of a piece. Sorry, can you repeat that? My internet broke yep. down. Yep. <laughs> um, any tips for close-up jewelry photography to avoid shadows and show the texture of a piece? Yes. Yes. So. Um... So your phone will have, uh, sometimes the phone will have a, um, what do you call it, like a close-up mode uh, that you will, that will focus on the, the little pieces and will blur the rest. Uh, and for, for cameras, you can also try um, a, a more specific lens for it. It can be a little expensive, but, uh, but if you have one of those 18 by uh, 50, 55 lenses, they can do the trick really well as well. Uh, and make sure that the jewelry or the, the piece is very clean because all these little details are going to show up and uh, natural light always but not direct light because it can um, it can uh, what do you call it you just can blank the whole product and it's not going to look as as it is in real life um, yeah and again the styrofoam board is very very important to to compensate any shadowing and uh, or to absorb the light that you need that is too much on your product and there's another question from Mariah, and it's how do we get a good light background just using the iPhone camera? A good light, uh, a light, light, good white background. Oh, well, it's not the phone that is going to do the trick. You really got to have a white background or, you know, as clear as possible. And um, I find that some, sometimes it can be a little tricky, your phone, uh, when you're doing the, the white balance. So there is a, I don't know, I haven't used an iPhone in a while, but uh, this Android here has um, a camera pro 
um, selection as well, which I find really good. You can um, manage the white balance of your picture. So it's, yeah, because it, usually it's, it's automatic. So uh, it can, and the auto and the, the white balance can distort the, the colors a little bit, especially if you're using products that are like purple, for example, purple and blue, they can be really tricky to work with. Um, so again, have the white background yourself and manage if you're using your phone, like try to manage this white balance uh, on your phone. So it's, so you're sure that the background is white. And then uh, when you're going on Photoshop or when you're post editing it and you're, you're in post production mode, you can always use the, the curves, um, uh, the curves tool. And uh, it's, it's a really great way to, you know, easily get the white background that you're looking for. I think on Mac is com command M or control M on, on Windows. And it's a really good, really good tool, <laughs> really helps out. And I've got one more question from Nick and he asked, is there any, uh, there, are there any tips, uh, cheats, hacks uh, you do in post-production to make sure all your backgrounds in a series of products match the same color tone? Like, is there any? Uh, let me think. It's the, Yeah, that is tricky. That's something we, because you're dealing with different, different elements, it's different images, right? So again, always use the same try. If, so when you're using sunlight, natural sunlight, it's really hard to uh, maintain a standard, right? Because you're depending on clouds, you're depending on the weather, you're depending on all these uh, external factors. So if you're using uh, an artificial light, either in a studio or with a ring light or a soft box at home, um, it's easier to maintain that, uh, uh, that, that, that quality standard, right? Um, but, uh, but one trick is to, uh, if you go to Lightroom, you can put all your pictures in, in Lightroom. You can, you know, see all of them together and have a clear sense of if they're looking, you know, similar or, or not. And always make sure that your white is, uh, has a curse that has the same hex number. So the hex number is, uh, the number of the color that is on, on your image. So if you go on Photoshop I think, or any other image editing, it's a icon, it's a, uh, what do you call it, like a drop, um, it's like a drop symbol. So anyway, I gotta find out the name of it. But um, yeah, you use that and you click on the color, click on the white background and check the number. So ideally it would be uh, F, 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 so six Fs. That's your, the widest width that you can get. But if it's not that wide and if it's like F, A, F, A, F, A, for example, uh, make sure that all the other images are carrying the same hex number. So it means that they're going to look the same on the back, even if it's not 100% white. It will be still will still have the same uh, white um, uh, the white tone. I think we just have one more question. We've got a little bit of time left. Um, hi, Tana. How to straighten the side of the product? Like, if, I think if it's a skew or if you took the camera picture at an angle and kind of need to straighten it. Oh, okay. Wow. Actually, I was even looking at um, uh, a page on Instagram and they, and they use, and all their models are kind of almost 45%, 45 degrees uh, uh, inclinated, which was, which was really, it's, it's, it was really interesting. So that's a really good question. Remind me of that. But uh, um, yeah, so on Photoshop, if you, um, so if you click on the, on the edges, uh, what, the edges of, of, of that image of that layer and, uh, and put your, your cursor a little bit to outside, you're gonna see that it becomes a little half moon symbol or a little curvy symbol. So that is, that is the, the, the tool that you use to, to twist your, um, your image. And it's not, yeah, uh, yeah. Make sure that it's that it's that it's straight. I think I used that resource and uh, that tool in one of the uh, the dresses that I shot. So the hang, you could see that the hanger was a little crooked. So you don't want that, right? You want it, you want it straight. Great. And really quickly, I think. Um, uh, where can we find inspiration or ideas for mood board, like for a mood board, like? Then she put Pinterest question mark. <laughs> yeah, well, I would say Polyvore, but we're not in 2007 anymore. Um, yeah, definitely Pinterest, um, Instagram. Uh, Google now has a, has a feature that I've been using a, a bit called Google Keep. So it's just a, you know, a deposit of, of stuff that you can put. So you can just drag and drop in this 
you know, blank canvas, all these uh, links and images and everything that you, uh, you're collecting. But I think Pinterest is, uh, is it's, it's easier to, to manage because mostly all, all, all websites, everything has a, you know, a pin it button and you can just throw it in there. Um, so that's really good. And you can adjust boards and also make it um, um, non-public. So only yourself can see it. So, you know, you're not sharing your, your references with anybody else. And um, yeah, or any other way to um, organize. So you organize your files, even just, you know, throwing everything in a folder as well, whatever works for you. But um, yeah, like all these uh, resources, always copy. If you see an image that you like, uh, you know, online from a brand, like always, you know, save it, take a screenshot and because, I, I feel like nothing, we don't create things anymore. Like we are always uh, uh, in, being inspired and repurposing and, you know, recycling ideas, recycling references. So it's, uh, so it's it, yeah, always keep every, anything that you like online, even in other e-commerces, uh, you know, from your competitors or people that you just, you know, admire and look up to, always save it and always, you know, revisit that and see how they're doing and see how you can, uh, you know, do it your, on your own way. Well, thank you, Tina, um, and, and thank you for uh, the e-commerce photography overview and helping us understand that you really don't need to invest in complicated and expensive equipment to take good quality pictures for your e-commerce website. Uh, good photos on your website can really help instill confidence uh, in customers and help convert them from browsers to buyers. Um, our next webinar uh, in writing for e-commerce will be on Wednesday, March 31st, again, same time, so 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, and Tina is going to provide you with helpful hints for writing for e-commerce. Great writing on your website is just as important as polished images uh, when selling your services and products uh, to customers around the world. If you haven't already registered, please do so. Um, I believe one of my colleagues will post the link in the group chat, uh, or please reach out to any one of us at the partnership after the webinar. Uh, as always, Halifax Partnership Smart Business Team is here to help you. If you need assistance as you're going through the process of getting your business online, reach out to any one of us at the partnership and we're happy to connect you to the resources you need. Um, thank you again, Tina, and to all of you for joining us uh, here today. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday. Have a great day. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. See you Wednesday.